I'm John White. With me today is Terry Peterson, and Terry is a avid gardener and a member of the Native Plant Society here in Las Cruces. And Terry, you brought a few problems with you today. Yes, John, I've got this tomato plant. It has really been defoliated. It really looks horrible. Okay. Um, tomato plant with a lot of uh, missing pieces on it is a sign of, uh, of an insect, probably a tomato hornworm that's been feeding on it. And I see we have a one here. It does have a tomato hornworm on it. And you can see the worm right here. Uh, there he's moving. And uh, tomato hornworm does have a uh, um, chewing mouth part on it, so it does take a lot of the foliage and pieces off. It's camouflaged very well, so it blends in very, very well with the plant. So a lot of times they're hard to detect. And um, so he's he's chomping away. He's done quite a quite a bit of work. Uh, this can be controlled with a uh, insecticide like Dipel, which is a biological control seven. Uh, anything like that, or you can simply remove these by hand, taking them off as hand removal. So a lot of times just finding them and, and getting them taken off by hand will help to solve the problem. But um, good problem. <laughs> what else do you have? We've got some pecan leaves here that have this yellow and brown splotching problem. Okay. Um, this time of year we're going to see a lot of uh, problems with this on pecans. Uh, we can see on the back side of the leaf here there's a lot of little black spots and that is the black pecan aphid. And uh, this is a rather serious pest of pecans. Um, these little yellow spots that are followed by necrotic dead areas, um, these will cause the leaves to fall from the tree prematurely a little bit early. So uh, we like to get this insect under control before it causes too much defoliation because we want to keep the leaves on the pecan. So um, we do want to get this under control. Again, insecticides registered for use on pecans uh, can be used. We want to make sure the pecan is not beginning to open you know, before we spray. So we still should have some time on that. But we do want to get those under control. And usually you'll find them on the inside of the tree down towards the center of it. What else do you have? I've got this lilac plant that has this horrible white stuff on it. Okay. It really looks terrible. Uh, lilacs are very prone to uh, powdery mildew. This one has a pretty good case of powdery mildew on it. Uh, with some of the rains we've had in the southern part of the state, humidity's been a little higher, and, okay. and uh, so the powdery mildew does tend to like uh, lilac, so it's very susceptible to it. So the use of a uh, registered fungicide for the control of powdery mildew would be would be good. Uh, there are some varieties that have a little bit of resistance to powdery mildew, so um, you know, if you have a chance to replant, then you would plant a resistant variety. Okay. What right. else do we have? I've got a Texas mountain laurel. The, the leaves look like they're being skeletonized. Okay. Uh, this is caused by a uh, caterpillar. I don't know if we can find it on here, but there is a little insect, little caterpillar that uh, feeds on Texas mountain laurel as well as some of the Spanish broom and uh, some of the members of, of that family. So uh, again, insecticide uh, for caterpillars like Dipel if you want to go um, biological or seven, malathion, anything like that will help to control it. Or if you catch it early enough, breaking some of the leaves off or clipping the tip off and getting rid of it that way will help to control it, but they will uh, really rag up the, the new growth on a, on a new, new planting. So, Terry, thank you very much for bringing samples today. Well, thank you, John.